So I've got some sweet potatoes and I think I'm going to try some just cubes I think kind of relatively small cubes and we could use them for whatever. And actually with these, we're not going to just blanch them. We're going to cook them until they're fairly tender. That way, if we want to use them later for uh, mashed potatoes or something, it won't take very much time. Just add the water and, or powder them up and then add water. Okay, so we got our potato chip pieces. Sweet potato, potato chips. Don't know how that'll do. Gonna try it out. So cook them for about three minutes. And now we're going to drain them and then salt them. Cause I yeah, do not know what to do with these. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if that's cooking them too long. Not enough. They feel very tender and very hot. Well, I guess I could let them cool for a minute. Oh sure, anybody could do it with metal tongs. I mean, somebody did an awesome cutting job. Oh, it was me. Let those cool for just a little bit and then get them ready to pre-freeze. So we're gonna get these cooked now. So we're gonna cook these until they're just tender so that they're actually cooked. So in case we wanna use them for mashed potatoes later or Whatever else, snacking on, I do not know. Now cover it, bring it back up to a boil, simmer it for a few minutes till they're nice and tender. I'm going to just lay them out on the silicone uh, mat and freeze them this way because I have a feeling that this will be stuck into a big strip. So if I do it that way, I'll still be able to put them on the freeze dryer tray easy enough. Because once they freeze dry, they shouldn't be stuck. They should fall right apart. And then I can stack them on top of each other in the freeze dryer tray is my plan. I don't know if this is a good plan. I probably should make them closer to the size of the freeze dryer tray. Cooked for about 20 minutes till they were tender, till they are tender. So they're just nice and tender now so we'll drain them and then get them on cookie sheets and into the freezer for pre-freezing waiting their turn in the freeze dryer and then get them poured out so this will steam off and dry out a little bit more And hopefully, after they're frozen, I can still break them up, up enough to get them in on the freeze dryer pans. Because I'm not going to try to spread them out now. Those will go down to the freezer for pre-freezing. And then when it's their turn for the freeze dryer, we'll transfer them to the freeze dryer trays. Okay, well, we'll let them cool a bit before we put them in the freezer. Those are still kind of scorching hot. The sweet potato cubes have had a chance to freeze. So I'm going to get them into some big zipper bags to wait their turn in the freeze dryer. So I'm hoping that they'll break apart. You know, because they're not, they weren't spread apart on the sheet very well. So I'm afraid that they're going to be kind of a big lump, but I'm hoping they'll break apart well enough because I don't mind if they get um, broken a bit. Well, they're coming apart pretty nicely. Well, I've got it on this corrugated plastic thing to keep it insulated a bit from the table so it doesn't warm it up. Okay, that's, that's not too bad. This came out pretty well. Uh, maybe 
and better off just flipping it over and then peeling it. So it looks like most of the moisture fell down to the silicone sheet and stuck to it, so now it's not on the food, so that's good. Because we don't need the extra moisture on here. So I might have to break these up more when we go to put them on the freeze dryer tray. But for now, I'll just get them in the bag. So those will just be waiting their turn for the freeze dryer. And we'll be back with them. Well, I should turn that off first. Freeze dryers finish defrosting after the ice cream and milk. So we'll get the defrost fan out of the door and get the little baffle out. Just a second. I'll be right back. Okay. Customize. Start custom and continue. And I'll double check the grades out, make sure it's closed. It's been cooling for way too long already, almost three hours. So it's really past time. Let's get the food in there and get it chilling. We'll go get them on the tray. Need to cut a little bit more parchment paper for the trays. So I've got my two little marks here and they slowly wear away as I wash the table. So I have to um, add a little bit to them every so often. Then I line the, that side of the ruler up with it, with the marks. All right, now I've got my roll of parchment paper. Just pull it out to the edge of the table. And done. Four of those real quick. But I couldn't save the last ones after the ice cream because there was just too much stuff on it. So if I were doing multiple batches of corn or peas or whatever, I would just keep using the same one over and over. Or just use none. It's really not a requirement. Okay. And that just sits on top of the box in the drawer until next time. So tray one. And we've got our sweet potatoes uh, that we cooked for this batch. And I've got some of the thin ones so I'm going to just take these and put them down on the tray first. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good plan because that leaves too much empty space underneath and I need to be able to cram them full. Okay, well let's try that. These are kind of stuck together a bit so I'll bust them up a little bit. So this is tray one. I need to get to 1889 to get to two and a half pounds. Okay, 1890, made it. Tray two. And the trays are nice and cold because I left them in the freezer. And this tray needs to get to 1881 to be two and a half pounds. Okay, that's close enough, 1880. Now push that down a little bit. Okay, tray three. Okay, so we're only about 50 grams short of 10 pounds, but again, every time we put stuff in the freezer uh, to pre-freeze, if it's not already a frozen bag of stuff, it loses weight uh, from moisture coming off of it while it's freezing. So it would have been 10 pounds to start with. We just lost about 50 grams while it was freezing. So I got thermometers just tucked in there. It's not near as good as drilling it into a piece of food but with the little pieces there's not a lot I can do. And it still gives me a little bit of a heads up of what's happening in there. Okay so we'll get them right in there going with tray four starting on the bottom. 
and working the way up. Boy, you can hear when that seal is cold, it goes clunk instead of squish. It's got about three more hours for the, in the pre-freeze cycle, uh, and then it'll go to the main dry cycle. If it doesn't look like it's cold enough, the food itself, then I'll add a little time. Uh, because I took so long getting it in there, it, yeah, it should have been in there a couple hours ago. But anyway, so if it's not cold enough, I'll add a little time. If it's cold ahead of that, I'll skip a little time. Anyway, we'll be back. Forgot to mention. So I can see the seal ring all the way around there. So I know that there's no air leakage in there. Uh, so I don't have to worry about it when it starts, if it's got a good vacuum or not, or a good seal. The sweet potatoes have been going for about 40 hours, including the freeze time. They're not gonna be done right now. And now it's going to be late. I planned on continuing every other day uh, for this series, or quicker. Had a couple of batches that were long and slow, uh, like the scallop potatoes. Um, and some other issues caused me to fall behind. So anyway, this is going to not come out tonight. I'm going to let it sit here till tomorrow. I am going to take it out and weigh it to get kind of a um, starting point. I'll give it a few more hours tonight, but I'm not going to have it run another 8 or 10 hours and have the vacuum pump running for 8 or 10 hours. It's probably not needed, so I'll check it in the morning. But I'll, if it uh, seems at all cold or anything, then I'll give it a lot of extra time right now. But right now, the bottom and top thermometers are both saying about 110, and the middle two are both saying about 120. So chances are it's doing pretty well. We'll get it stopped, checked, and put back in. And I should mention that I already gave it an extra hour and a half to get it to this point. Uh, so it's already had 12 and a half hours of final dry. And also, again, the thermometers are up. Okay, so arrow past the last of that. And get the drain valve open. Okay. And I real rotate the trays top to bottom as usual. And I think I'm going to kind of move them around a bit, stir them around. All right, so tray one, $8.99. Okay, tray four, so I can rotate them, $8.90. So again, I'm going to kind of stir them around to make sure that there are no cold spots. Yeah, nothing. It feels nice and warm. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to put that one at the top. And I'm going to try, going to kind of stir these around too. That's cool right there. Okay. There's an ice spot in the center of that. You can see that? There's a little ice spot. Right there. And right there. Little frozen spot right in the center of that. All right. Well, so we know it's going to lose weight. So we know it's going to lose more weight because it has some ice inside. These will be kind of interesting. I'm going to have to snack at least one of them tomorrow. <coughs> Tray two. 889. And tray three. 886. Okay, again, I'm going to kind of stir them around. That's going to go back in. Okay, so that's going up by four. All right. 
So we'll get that Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close the drain valve. I'm not an early person um, It's just after midnight now and I will not be back to check this before oh, 10 um, It doesn't need to run for 10 more hours on final drive that would be a lot but it probably needs more than two hours because I did find a little cold spot little uh, frozen spot in one of the pieces one of the big pieces the rest of the ones I checked were all warm inside so somewhere on one tray there was one piece that definitely had a piece of ice in it and that would be a problem we're going to get it we're going to get it out of there by running it long enough and then weighing it to make sure that it's gone um, so I think I'll give it five more hours right now because I know I'm going to give it another hour or so in the morning to rewarm it and then we'll give it a couple of hours to check it so let's get it restarted so I'm going to add m more dry time drain valve is closed continue and start okay and then I'm going to bump it up okay so a full five hours more of final dry time <sighs> it doesn't really matter how much I give it I could just let it run until I come back um, I could even cancel the whole thing out, restart it so that it starts freezing again, and so then it would freeze and then go through a main dry cycle, but since it wouldn't pull out very much moisture, it would switch to a small batch cycle, so it would still jump to the final dry pretty quickly. I don't know which way is the best way, I've done it multiple ways. Um, but frankly, I'm going to just let it run for five more hours and then in the morning I'll recheck it, get everything restarted, get back on track and be a day later. But all i got to do is do one batch that's a real quick batch and be right back on time. Mostly it's because I can't get up early in the morning. so. Uh, because of the rechecking, I can never get one started before noon or 2 o'clock. Uh, otherwise, if I could get up in the morning, this will be done at 5 in the morning. I could get a batch going by 8 or 9 and 10 in the morning, even after a defrost. But that isn't going to happen with me. So, anyway, we'll get it going again. The sweet potatoes have had a chance to rewarm a good long time because I forgot that I was just rewarming them and not doing a drying. Uh, so now we can stop it, check them, the weights, and then get them back in there for the weight check. Uh, so let's get that checked. Uh, the temperatures are up and the pressure's down. That's a good sign. The pressure, the temperatures are all between about 110 and 125. So arrow past the last of that. Okay, then open the drain valve. And so now we can compare the weights to last night at the same time. So starting at tray one, they sure look good. They look fabulous. Okay, so tray one. So 8.95. So it's only down four. So that's only down four from where it was before. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and leave them on the same tray spots. So tray two. Huh. Ah. 8.88 plus a little. So this one's gone down less than a gram during that whole time. So maybe we'll do a shorter amount of time if none of them are very far. Well, the first one is still four grams. So anyway, tray three. Hmm. 
8.85. That's only down by one. And tray four, I think this is the one we found the cold spot in. I don't know. Yeah, tray one. Uh, that's only down by one. So tray one, I am going to switch that one. So tray one is the only one that moves significantly and it's only four grams. I'm going to go ahead and put it up at the top where it's a little bit warmer. Make sure that it is done. Okay. Yeah, I think everything's probably well done then. So we've got the sweet potatoes back in there, but let's consider the numbers. Um, I weighed them last night and then put them back in for five more hours, plus another two hours just now. So it's had seven more hours to dry and three trays went down one gram or just a portion of a gram. So it's basically, if it had that amount of drop in just three hours, I would have taken them out. But this is already at least seven hours. And then one tray has had a four gram drop during that time. That's still a very small amount considering the number of the fact that it's seven hours of final dry. I'm going to go ahead and restart it just so that it's in a drying cycle while I get the bags ready. I'm going to go ahead and close the drain valve. Yeah, put more dry time and continue. The fact that there's such a small amount of drop in such a long time suggests that it was, it's been done for a while already. So I'll get the bags ready and we'll get ready to bag them as soon as we can. Down arrow past the rest of that. So get the drain valve open. And we'll double check these as they take them out because, you know, it would be silly not to weigh things when it can. And there's been no change. So let's check two. Okay, no change. Try three. Make sure it's not touching and no change and finally tray four and also no change so finally we can shut this thing off so going to hit no defrost holy mcmoley that's quieter finally got it quieter we'll get the defrost baffle in place and get the fan going. So I'm going to roll the trays over and then we'll get the time and the power usage. This one's kind of a tough one because of the time overnight. Um, I could look at the video from last night and we know that it needed some more time but it was finished before those next five hours were on there. So I really don't know the time to put. But now, we'll go check the power usage. Power usage says 34.31, but again, of course, that's what I will have spent on it. But if you were ready to take it out when it was done, it was done hours ago. So it's not a true reflection of what it did cost to do that one. But it's what it cost me because I didn't take it out. So therefore it was still there. Okay, so we'll move on to the bagging. So we'll get all of the weights, we'll get all the thermometers out and then we can get the weights. Okay, so 887, tray two, 879, tray three, 875, 
879880. Now we can do the calculation for how much they are now. I'll do the math, we'll be right back. So here's what we have. So before it was freeze dried, the potatoes were 10 pounds or 4536 grams. Now it's only 527 grams for the 10 pounds. It had a water loss of approximately 4,009 grams. So to uh, bag it, ideally, if I can get a pound, it'd be 52.7 grams per pound with a water uh, you need to put it in just over or just under 401 grams of water per pound. I also calculated it out for three quarters of a pound and a half pound in case one pound won't fit in a bag. So we'll find out what will fit in a bag and get them bagged. All right, let's see what will fit in there. I need 52.7 grams to equal a pound. It might fit, I do not know. Maybe two fifths of a tray, oh, it might. That's not going to fit. Okay, so I still need more to get to the 52. So let's see what that would look like. All right, so I need to get it to here. I don't think that that's really closable. So I'm going to have to go with three quarters of a pound. Um, So then we go to 39. So I'll go with three quarters of a pound. That will fit. That will close. All right. So I'll label these for three quarters of a pound. Have to make a couple extra bags and maybe end up with a half pound one. So I'll get that labeled on there. Be right back. So these little guys are the slabs. Uh, just cut some thin pieces of it and then boiled them so that they were cooked and then sprinkled salt on them. So test it out. Not crisp though. No. Because there's not enough body there, probably because I cooked them too much. So maybe I need to just barely blanch them. That'd be a good idea grill them next time mm -hmm. or even in the oven yeah make them crisp make them like chips okay so but Flavor's the good. idea is good mm -hmm. yeah so i'll try this again maybe oven or grill crisp them up because i do want to have them cooked but i think of grilling them or oven because by boiling them they became soft and so now they're a fluffy texture inside pretty good though. So now back to the bags. We have the bags labeled for three quarters of a pound and that it needs 300 grams of water back in to get it similar. And they'll just absorb pretty much what they need so you really don't have to worry about that except if you're going to use them in something or perhaps if you're going to crush them and make mashed potatoes because when they're dry like this it'd be pretty easy to just pound them a bit and powder them and then have mashed potatoes out of them. So we'll get the rest of these bagged. 39 and a half grams a piece. So I'm going to do another batch of these later. I'll figure out a different cooking method because boiling kind of ruins them. I mean, you know, it just makes them kind of soft and fluffy, not crisp and chippy. That's really crammed in there. That's going to end up breaking them. Oh well. I'm still going to try to put that amount in there. Not the chips that I wanted, but it's the chips that I have. You deal with what you have. There, I really crammed those in there. 
and I got it to one pound. So that one is going to be super full, but that way I just have that little bit of quality assurance uh, quantity left over or taste testing. The sweet potatoes are bagged in 13 one quart bags. I'm using the seven mil um, Mylar bags with the gusseted bottoms. It's kind of my favorites. If I hold that shut, I could show the bottom. So it's the bottom like that. Now I'm going to put 300 cc oxygen absorbers in there. And if you remember, this is the one that I used part of a previous one and showed the oxygen sensors inside and how fast they turn color when they're exposed to oxygen. Well, now you can see after sitting in the bag, uh, sealed back up, they turn back to no oxygen exposure. So I really want to put some of these on the inside at some point, but I have to remember to check them instantly because they change so fast. So I'm going to start with this one because I'll be using this whole set of 10. And I have three more that I need out of the next one. So there, look how fast that goes. That is just incredible. This is so much faster than some of the old ones. I like those. Let's get these tucked in and I'm going to try to tuck them down the side a little bit. Make sure that they stay out of the zippers and out of the seal area. Okay, now we'll get those closed. And there's not a lot of room for pushing out extra air on these, but you can vacuum out any extra air if you have a um, vacuum system, vacuum chamber or something for bagging. I mean, the more air you get out, the less oxygen is in there to begin with. The ultimate to me would be to, when I open the drain valve of the chamber, would be to have a nitrogen cylinder and I'm filling it up with nitrogen. So all the little spaces inside the food are filled with nitrogen instead of air. Now, heat sealer time. All right, nicely sealed. I've got it pretty close to the top. I actually like to get it sealed higher than that, um, but that one's sealed. So I like to get it right at the top edge with the full seal, leave myself space for two or three more. I still left a, enough space for two more. So, and that first one, I wanna go twice to make sure that it's up to temperature. Okay, and get these all sealed, making sure that I've got that smooth. Let it cool for just a couple of seconds. All right. So the last step before I put them in the bins, I'm going to put a gross weight of each bag on the bag. So 63 grams for this bag. Now, I know that this bag, as it sits, weighs 63 grams with everything in it. So I've got the batch number, what it is when it went into the freeze dryer, what it weighed before it was freeze dried, freeze dried, that's good. What it weighed before it was freeze dried, how much water it needs to get it back to that, and the gross weight of this entire bag in case the bag starts to fail and let water in. All of these bags will let water and oxygen in. It's just a matter of how fast and will be, and will we still be alive for it to matter by the time it's high enough. Um, but all bags are letting oxygen and moisture, humidity to go through that bag slowly forever. So we're just trying to slow it down and anything that gets in, we're trying to absorb in the oxygen absorber and convert it to rust. So as soon as these are all done, we'll move over. So I won't let make you watch all this.
I don't want to forget to mention that before I started this batch, I changed out the oil filter pieces, the paper towel filters, uh, in the oil filtration uh, system on my vacuum pump. Um, I didn't show it this time because it's just the same as the other time and because it was really late and I was tired and I just didn't feel like videoing. Anyway, it was just the same as before. But I am going to make a change because while I was doing that, I realized what I need to make to make it faster in the future. So I'll show that in a future thing. For now though, the sweet potatoes are finished and bagged and ready to store. Uh, bagged them in 13 one quart bags and they're ready to go into bin six. After that, we only have one more item for bin six and that's going to be uh, white bean chicken chili, which will be coming up as soon as the freeze dryer is defrosted. Uh, in the meantime, we'll get these in there and get ready for those. That. And we've got the ice cream scoops. It's interesting how the ice cream scoops get all sucked down and, and vacuumed down, but the milk doesn't. Okay, so now we'll add the sweet potatoes. So we clearly still have room for one more batch, which will be the white bean chicken chili. So that's it. We'll move on to the next thing. So the sweet potatoes are done. Uh, we tried to make some chip ones, but they weren't entirely successful. I mean, they're delicious and all that, but they're still just kind of fluffy. They're not crisp and crunchy. So I'm going to try some other methods. Uh, won't get it done with while well, this series is going, but I can try some other methods. So I'm thinking either oven bake them or grill them so that they start out very crispy because I still want them cooked. I just want them to be crisp. That will probably help because it'll change the structure before they get freeze dried. Boiling them was probably the wrong method because it just makes them kind of fluffy, you know, because it adds some water to it as it goes. So we'll try it a different way this next time. Also, I want to point out that this batch didn't go in until July 1st. Um, I had issues that slowed me down and has nothing to do with freeze drying. Uh, that would do just fine. It could keep up with the pace of one every one batch every two days it is not really that much of a problem unless you do a couple of batches of pineapple or even a big batch of pineapple. It's going to take too long to dry. For what I've done though, none of that should have been a big problem, but I'm a little slower than I should be on some of it, so it takes me a while to get around to it sometimes. That's why it's slow. Anyway, moving on. Um, next thing is we're doing a batch of white bean chicken chili. So we cook a batch of the, of the white bean chicken chili and then freeze dry a portion of it. We end up freeze drying about a half a batch. It, it makes close to 35 to 40 cups for a batch. So it's a nice sized batch. Uh, but we eat pretty big portions of it because it's really good. Okay, that's it for now. We'll move on to the next thing as soon as the freeze dryer is defrosted. Today is July 1st. No. All right, enough procrastination. Let's get on to putting things off.